coming on. As you're coming on, I want you to share this very quickly. Thank you, Father. You are worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be lifted up. You're worthy to be magnified. God bless you, Kamisha. God bless everyone. God bless everyone that's coming on right now. Father, we bless you. We magnify you for what you're going to do, for what you're going to say in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray a very quick prayer. What I want you to do, amen, God bless everybody. I'm a couple minutes late. Actually, I should forgive me for being a couple minutes late. I said I was going to come on at 1145. So what I want to do is I want to minister. I just want to minister in the prophetic realm. God bless you, Tiana Moore. What I want you to do is I want you to share. I want you to invite. I want you to just make this thing just go out because this is going to be a time of just personal prophecy. I believe in giving the word of the Lord. I believe in preaching and believe in teaching. But I believe there's a time when we need direction, where we just need answers. We need God to speak to us. And there's some of you that have been waiting for answers and God's going to speak to you. Just give me a couple minutes to just pray and just set the atmosphere. I'm going to begin to minister to you. What I'm asking you to do is I want you to send me some hearts up, share this out. Let some other people get a hold of this today because there is a word for you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, guys, I come before you. God bless you, Wanda. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you this, this, this afternoon. Father, I thank and I praise you, God, for what you're going to do, for what you're going to say, God, for how you're going to move and for how you're going to bless your people today. I ask in the name of Jesus, God, as I come before you, oh God, that you would right now in the name of Jesus begin to speak to each and every one of these God that are gathered upon this live father let this be a moment of personal prophecy father will you begin to speak into our heart and speak into our mind speak into our spirit father speak into our souls today in the name of Jesus I pray that right now oh God that whatever answers that your people stand in need of God that you would give us answers we desire to hear a word from you we desire to know your heart and your mind concerning our situations. And so today, oh God, as I turn this live over into your hands, I'm asking in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would search me. That you would search me, oh God. Search me on the inside. And Father, know my heart. Know my mind, know my spirit, know my thoughts, oh God. As I come before you, Lord, I'm, I'm turning this live over into your hands. And I'm asking, oh God, that your spirit would speak expressly through me, oh God, to these your people, oh God. Give them answers, my God. Only you can give answers. Only you can speak. Only you can deliver. And so today, God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would speak. Speak to us, oh God. Speak for your servant here, Lord. I'm asking, Lord, that every situation that your people are facing this afternoon, that you would speak to it. Yes, Lord. I'm asking in the name of Jesus, oh God, that them that are sick, that you would give them healing in their body. Them, oh God, that are troubled in their mind. I'm asking in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would give them answers, give them relief. And give them a release. And I give you praise and I give you glory for what you're going to say today, for what you are going to do, for how you are going to move, for how you are going to bless, for how you are going to deliver, for how you're going to set free by your spirit, for how you're going to move upon all those. I want those that are coming on to begin to share this, for how you're going to move over situations, over difficult situations. I thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God, that you're moving upon this life. Spirit of the living God, I'm asking that you would speak to these your people today in Jesus mighty name and I give you the glory and I give you the praise and I magnify your name for what you will say to us God because I know that you will speak into the depths of our soul and I give you glory for it now in Jesus mighty 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 name God thank you Lord somebody just say Lord have your way right in your house right in your job wherever you are just say Lord have your way have your way right now in Jesus mighty mighty name God I give you glory the Lord tells me to tell those that are coming on this live right now the Lord said that there's a wind of change that is blowing today I just see change taking place Many of you have been in a place of waiting. Many of you have been in a place of anticipating the move of the Lord. And I heard the Lord say there was a wind of the spirit that's about to blow over many of your lives. He said, not only will it blow over the many of your lives, but God told me to tell you, he says it's going to blow in the lives of many of your family members. I hear the Lord tell me to tell many of you that are on this live today. The Lord said, prepare for the change. And I hear the spirit also speaking to me and telling me to tell many of you. Oh, 
I hear the Lord telling me to tell many of you that are on this live today. He told me to tell you this. He said, I want to lift your burdens off you. I'm looking in the spirit and I see many of you that have been burdened down. And I hear the Lord said, today I come to lift the burdens off of your shoulders. He said, I come to take the yoke off of your neck. He said, many of you have been oppressed by the hand of the enemy. And God said today, he said, I come to deal with the oppression that have been upon you. I see several of you. Mandosha. I see many of you, the enemy has been attacking you in the night as you lay upon your bed. And I heard the Lord said today, he said, I come to deal with that. I come to lift the burden. I hear some people even in my ear saying, Lord, I need your help. And I heard the Lord say, your cry has come up before me. And God said, help is on the way. 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 God's about to provide help. Help is coming. Help is coming. There's a woman that is watching me that is on this live. I want all of you to share this. I want you to put this in groups. Find 10, 15 people to share. I feel the spirit of grace upon me today. There's a woman that is watching me that is upon this side. The Lord told me to, he said, on the right side of your body. The Lord said, you've been having pains on the right side of your body. God said, today I come to heal. There's another person that is watching me that is on this side. The Lord just spoke to me and told me to tell you this. He said that you've been dealing with a pounding headache for a number of days. He said, lay your hands upon your head right now he said I'm going to give healing right now over your head lay your hands on your head right now healing is coming I rebuke that condition right now I command it to go into dry places by the power of the blood of life there's another person that is watching me that's on this side last night you were crying because you were disrespected Mandosa. there's someone that you've been doing a lot for that you've gone above and beyond for this person and the way that they spoke to you it hurt you to the core of your heart and I saw when you were on your bed and I saw tears coming down your face and I heard the Lord tell me tell you he said don't worry about it he said I'm gonna deal with the situation I heard you say to the Lord also Lord I am tired I'm tired and it seems like that this is a reoccurring theme that even in your family the disrespect that you've been experiencing in your family God told me to tell you this he said, I'm going to deliver you from it. I'm going to deliver you from it. I'm going to deliver you in peace from the battle that is against you. Echo C. I want all of those on. Oh God, I give you praise. I give you glory. I honor you right now for what you are doing, for what you are saying. There's a person that is watching me that is on this live. Behind your right eye, you've been dealing with pain that comes and goes behind your right eye. The Spirit of God is going to give you healing behind your right eye. Receive that healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that you're healing them right now. I thank you that you're delivering them right Right now, got to give you praise. There's a woman that's watching me that's on this side in your right hand. You've been dealing with pain. In your right, in the right side, on your right side, you've been dealing with pains in your right side. God told me to tell you, He said, Healing is about to take place for you. Right in your right side. So saith the Spirit. Now, I want everyone to lie. The more you share, the more you invite, the more visible you become. Deliverance is your portion. Lay your hands right in your right side where you've been having pain in your right side. God is going to give you healing in your right side. Healing be your portion right now in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to go up and down this live right now. And as the Lord just shows me things concerning individuals that are on this live, I'm going to release the word of the Lord. When I close my eyes, I heard somebody talking to God. And what I heard you say to God, I heard you say, Lord, I want my prayer life back. There was something that came. You experienced a big hit in your life. And after you experience this big hit in your life, it has affected your prayer life. Your prayer life has gone down as a result of what you went through. That's what I heard the Lord say. And God said, I will restore your prayer life. You've been asking God for the restoration of your prayer life. And God said today, he said, tap into the anointing that is flowing right now. Because God said, I'm going to begin to restore your prayer life. Not only am I restoring your prayer life, but God told me, he said, I'm going to restore to you the years that the locusts, the cankerworm, and the palmworm have eaten. So many years have been taken away from me. There's a person, another person that is watching me that is upon this side. The Lord said, in your lower lumbar region, God said, you 
you've been dealing with pain in your lo lower lumbar region. I hear the Spirit said, tap into divine healing. He said there was a flow of healing in your body right now in Jesus' mighty name. There's another person that's watching me that is on this live. You've been dealing with nerve pain. You need healing in your nerves. Handoboshah, God's giving you healing in your nerves. See that right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. In, in your nerves. There's another person on the left side of your head right here on this upper portion right here on the left side of your head you've been dealing with pain on the left side of your head i heard the lord tell me to tell you he said healing is coming forth he's healing you right now i rebuke that right now i commanded to go into dry places in the name of jesus everyone that's under any form of attack in your body today i come against all attacks in your body in jesus mighty name so saith the lord there's a melissa who was watching me upon this side melissa let me tell you what the holy ghost just told me to tell melissa who was watching me melissa the spirit of God told me to tell you this. He said, days that have been behind you are behind you. I hear the Lord tell me, he said, there was a new day that is before you. He said, forget those things that are behind. I hear the Lord said, it's now time for you to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I see your past. A woman named Melissa, I see your past is chasing you. It looked like two dogs. I see them running behind you. It represents your past. God told me to tell you, he said, I'm delivering you from your past. I want everyone on this side to continue to share and invite. Father, I thank you right now. There's a woman named Linda Dunn that is watching me upon this side. Linda Dom was watching me. The Lord told me to, he said better days are before you. I hear the Lord also speak to me, tell me to this. He said this is a season of great transformation that's going to take place in you. God told me to, he said I'm going to begin to correct those things that need to be corrected in your life. And I hear the Lord tell me to, he said the struggle that you've been facing. He said I'm going to begin to deliver you from the struggles that you've been in. I saw your feet in quicksand and I saw you moving your feet and the more you tried to move your feet it's like you were going down and there's been no movement but I heard the Lord said I'm going to begin to cause there to be movement in your life I'm going to cause there to be a shift in your life God let there be a shift even right now in the name of Jesus shift things around in Jesus' mighty name, let it be so. In the name, I see a woman on the line by the name of Chim Chimanetta, C H I M E N T A. The Spirit of God told me to, He said, I'm going to give you an idea. There's an idea that's coming down from the presence of God. He said, I'm going to open up the window of heaven. And God said, When I've opened up the windows of heaven, God said, There's an idea that's coming down because God said, I'm going to bless you in industry. There is something that God's going to do. Mandabaso in industry, industry, industry is coming forth. So say the Lord your God. Got to give you praise. When you send up stars as well, I can see the stars comments when they come up and also i encourage you to send up hearts i encourage you to share this all out i want you to find as many people as you can i want you to share this with them because the prophet has come to prophesy and minister to god's people nikita who was watching me upon this live nikita the spirit of god told me to he said You've been living beneath your privilege. There is something that God's about to do in your life. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to elevate your life to the next place. There is a step up. You're about to take a step up in life. And when you take this next step up in life, I hear the Lord tell me, he said, there's some people that used to could walk with you. He said, there's some people that used to be connected to you. When you take this next step, God told me, he said, they're not going to be connected to you anymore. Because God said, I'm changing all things concerning you. So saith the Lord. Now once somebody on the live to go and share this with 10 of your friends come back to the live let me know i'm going to minister to that person a person under the name of antonio antonio who is watching me on this live antonio the hand of the lord is upon your life the hand of the lord is upon your life and i hear the lord speak to me and tell me to tell you this he said i'm about to do a new thing in your life god told me to he said there's gifts and their callings that are on the inside of you and god said i'm going to begin to reveal who you are he said even from the foundation of time who i created you to be god said you're going to come into an understanding of who you are i hear the lord said you've gone through many dark periods in your life and the reason why you went through those dark periods because god said i was forming something in you he said i caused greatness to be forged in the crucible of affliction and so god said i put you in difficult places to birth things out of you so saith the lord i see a woman by the name of army copeland hardy army the lord told me to, he said your prayers have been heard there are divine answers that are coming under by shokobaha the divine answers that are coming down from the presence of the Lord for you. He told me, to, he said, from the first day that you set your heart to seek me, he said, I heard your cry. And I heard the Lord also speak to me. And the Lord told me to tell you this. He said, there was a wind. I prophesied when I first got on the live concerning a wind of change. You're one of them that's going to experience the wind of change in your life. Also in your finances, I don't know, but there has been some type of spiritual attack that has been over your finances. But God told me to tell you, he said, I'm going to deliver you from the attack against your finances. So say the Lord. There's a woman named Isolene Carr. She said she shared it. It's in 20 groups. God bless you, Isolene. Let me tell you what the Lord's about to do in your life.
your life. He said, I'm preparing a path for you. I don't know. I see some type of loneliness in your heart. I don't know. There's some longing or some loneliness that is in your heart. And God said, I'm going to fill every lonely place in your heart. Not only will I fill every lonely place in your heart, the Spirit of God speaks to me and tells me to tell you, he said, it's time now for you to rise up to a different place. He said, a place of favor, a place of blessing. And I don't know, but there is a connection that is coming in your life. It's going to change your life for the rest of your life. Chevelle Rooms, let me tell you what the Spirit of God told me to say. The Lord told me to say, he said, I'm going to begin to reveal myself to you in a new way in this season. The Lord said, set your heart to seek me. He said, as you seek me, he said, you will be found. Here it is. And what he means by you will be found, the things that you're going to find out about yourself as you seek him. He's going to reveal things concerning your destiny. The things concerning your destiny that are here that God said, I'm going to begin to reveal. And also the Lord told me to say, he said, here it is. He said, I'm going to begin to deal with the stagnation, even that's been in your finances. You've not seen any movement in your finances. It's been, in, it's been in a stagnant place. But I hear the Lord say, I'm going to begin to shift you out of that place. So saith the Lord your God. This is what I want everyone to do right now. Amen. That's on this side. I got 584 people. I want all of you to go share crazy and go ahead and share and invite. Amen. Tag friends. Put this in groups all over because I feel like prophesying today. Tanzania Lee, who just shared this in six groups. God bless you. Tanzania, let me tell you what the Lord told me to tell you. The Lord told me to tell you this. He said, be still. He said, you're going to see the salvation of the Lord your God. He said, be anxious for nothing. There is something that's going to come, uh, a decision, and it's going to be like you're going to feel the pressure to, to take a leap and to do something. But if you took, if you take a leap and, and you move in a particular direction, it's not going to be advantageous to you. So I heard the Lord tell me, tell you this. he said, be still. He said, wait until the troubling of the waters. He said, wait until I speak to you. He said, wait until I give you a direction. He said, do nothing of your own. He said, if you do it on your own, the Lord said, there will be struggle. He said, there will be challenge so i hear the lord tell me he said prepare yourself so say the spirit of the living god those that are on the live i want you to continue to share this god i give you praise i give you honor for what you are doing in jesus name financial deliverance is, is about to take place for many that are on this live today i heard the lord said financial deliverance is going to be your portion in the name of jesus financial financial deliverance is going to be your portion god's going to deliver many of you in the area of your finances. God, as I lift these, your people before you, financial deliverance be their portion today in Jesus' mighty name. A woman named Princess Wilson in Dupre, as you're watching me upon this live, the Spirit of God told me to tell you this. He said, I'm going to begin to turn. He said, I'm going to begin to turn some things around in your favor. He said, favor is about to locate your life. He said, not only is favor going to locate your life, but the Spirit of God spoke to me. Told me to tell you, he said, I'm going to also begin to shift even many things out of your life. The Lord said, this is a season of a divine cleanup. He said, I'm cleaning up some things. And also your mentality. God said, it's time now for me to stretch you in a different place. God is about to stretch you prepare for the stretching i just saw him stretching you i saw him stretching you he's going to move you out of your comfort zones you've been in your comfort zone for too long i declare in the name of jesus oh god that you come out of your comfort zone even right now that you will not dwell in your comfort zone any further in jesus mighty name a woman named Mo mona who was watching me upon mona there's a woman named mona that's watching me that's been believing god for a very long time you believe in him for a relocation. A woman named Mona that is watching me. God told me to, he said, I'm able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask or think according to the power that is working in you. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to begin to open up a door for a, for, for, for an escape. It's, it's like a, a door of escape from your not only your current situation, but I hear God causing you to, 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 to shift into another season of divine settlement. So saith the spirit of the living God. God, I give you praise right now for it, that you're doing it in Jesus name. Those that are on the line, continue to share this. Amen. God, I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory, God, in Jesus' mighty name. I'm looking on this live. I want to minister to some people. Amen. Mm. There's a woman named Vanessa Rouse Jones who was watching me upon this live. Vanessa, who was watching me upon this live, the, the hand of the Lord is about to come over you. And I hear the Lord say, I'm going to begin to cause there to be provision in your life. And also, for some reason, I'm seeing some type of generational curses that have been existing and have been operating and functioning in your family that have been causing hindrance in your family. And God told me, to, he said, I'm breaking that off of your life. Not only am I breaking that off of your life, but the Spirit of God spoke to me. He told me to tell you this. He said, this is a season. I'm going to begin to settle many things. He said, there, there are unsettled things that are in your family. And God said, I'm going to begin to settle things that are in your family. So say the Lord your God. There's a woman that is watching me that is on this side. The Spirit of God just told me to tell you this. He said that 
Recently, you've been dealing with severe cramping. There's been some type of spiritual attack. God bless you for knowing. Okay, those that are on the live, I want you to send me some hearts. I want you also to share this out. You've been dealing with some, some severe cramping, and God's going to give you healing from that. The Lord said it's not natural. The Lord, the Lord is actually showing me your ovaries. When I look at your ovaries, I'm looking at cysts that are on some of your ovaries. God's going to give you healing from cysts that have developed on your ovaries. And so the reason why you've been having these pains and these cramps have been at another level is because of the fact that you have been dealing with cramp, with um, these, these, these cysts. And so in the name of Jesus, I curse these cysts right now in Jesus' mighty name by the power of the blood of the, and I declare that these cysts the Oshana, that they will be destroyed in Jesus' name. God, I give you praise and I give you glory. Like I said, when you send up the stars, amen, and I also encourage people to send up hearts and share because Facebook recognizes engagement. When your engagement goes down, your visibility goes down. So go ahead and engage, amen. When you sit back in the cut and be like, oh, I just want him to call me, sometimes they don't even show me you. They don't even show me you. So what I ask you to do is I ask you, make sure you're following this page. Not only are you following this page, but I want you to share this page out so other people can be glad. God bless you, Sister Linda. I just saw you. A woman named Fanna Holiday who was watching me upon this live. Fanna Holiday, the Lord told me to, he said that the hand of the Lord is about to be revealed on your behalf. I see secret enemies. I see three secret enemies that are about to be exposed in your life that have been hindering things in your life. God said, this is the season that your enemies will be dealt with. He said, all of them will be dealt with. He said, I will bring them down. So said the Lord, your God. There's a woman named Whit Whitney Guyton who was watching. Whitney, I don't know, but I just saw in the spirit realm that there was someone at a particular season in your life that went into a gate and they shut a door. They slammed that door. But God told me, Jesus, not only will I deal with the person who shut the door, but God said, I'm going to reopen the gate. And God said, you're going to get access in this season. Access was denied something. Also, the Lord told me, Jesus, there's an old lie that I'm about to expose. I just saw an old lie that's about to be exposed. So say the Lord, your God. I want somebody to send me up some hearts. Just give me some, a little heart offering. Andrea said, please pray for me having back problems. Father, I lift Andrea before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. As I lift Andrea before you, I ask in the name of Jesus, God, that you would heal Andrea. I rebuke everything that is attacking Andrea's body. I cast it out. I command it to go into dry places right now in the name of Jesus. Father, give Andrea her healing right now in Jesus' mighty mind. Andrea, not only is God going to touch you in your back, but I heard the Holy Ghost tell me to you, he said, I got your back. In many situations, you have felt like you have been alone. God's going to, let me tell you something. God is about to show up and God's going to, like the old people say, God's going to show up and he's about to show out in your life. And I I hear the Lord say, I'm going to also show people who have, hear this, who have downplayed you. He said, I'm going to show people who you are. So say the Lord, your God. There's a woman named Tonka who just sent me some stars. Tonka Taylor, who just, I don't know, I see a lot of struggle around you. I come against every struggle that I see around you. Some type of, the enemy has initiated and released some type of struggles against you. God's going to break you out of some struggles. He's going to break you out of some warfare. May that be so in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. May God break you out by the power of the blood of the lamb. May he get you out. May he break you out of that struggle now in Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name. And God, I give you glory that it is so in the name of Jesus. Somebody said, pray for my son, DJ. Father, I lift up. Mm. I don't know. I just saw a serpent when I closed my eyes. I saw a serpent coiled up. He just showed me the. And when I see a serpent coiled up, it's positioned to strike. There is something that the devil has planned against DJ. But today, in the name of Jesus, every attack of the enemy, every attempt of the enemy, I strike it down. I cut off the head of every serpent in the name of Jesus that wants to rise up against DJ today. In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against him shall be able to prosper in Jesus' mighty, 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 mighty name. There's somebody been dealing with some pain in the lower left hand side of your jaw. I'm feeling a pain right down up in here. You're dealing with pain down here. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost cares about every little thing. He cares about the small details. There is something, some a, a pain that someone's been dealing with right down here. God's going to give you healing from that pain. Lay your hands right there in Jesus' mighty name. Fathers, I lift them before you right now in the name of Jesus. This pain that they've been experiencing in the lower portions of the left side of their jaw. Father, heal them right now. I rebuke that pain. I command that to go into dry places right now. Father, let your healing virtue begin to flow now in Jesus' mighty name. It's not by power, it's not by might, but God, it is by your spirit in Jesus' mighty name. There's another person that's watching me that's on this slide. The Lord just spoke to me and told me, to, he said, you have blocked fallopian tubes. Your fallopian tubes are blocked. In the name of Jesus, I unblock your fallopian tubes in Jesus' mighty name. A person named Claire Graham said, please pray I was attacked in my sleep all night. Claire Graham, let me lift you up before God right now. Fathers, I lift up Claire Graham before you right now in the name of Jesus' 
by the power of the blood of the Lamb. As I lift up Claire Graham before you right now, I declare in the name of Jesus by the power of the blood of the Lamb that every enemy that's attacked her through the night, every spiritual attack, I come against every spiritual attack right now. I command you, Satan, to loose her and to let her go. I plead the blood of Jesus over and against every foul spirit that's been attacking you in the night season. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, this is witchcraft that they're doing on you. The Lord said this is not a natural attack. God said this is a spiritual attack. He said they've been practicing witchcraft on you. But today, in the name of Jesus, all forms of witchcraft that they are practicing over your life. Father, I come against all forms of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Let witchcraft lose its hold over you now in Jesus' mighty name. Witchcraft, you have no hold. Witchcraft, you have no power. Witchcraft, you have no dominion over her right now in the name of Jesus. Let witchcraft be cast down in Jesus' mighty name. There's a woman named Astra Woodby. I said, pray for my daughters, Laurel and Lavelle. I cover them right now. The Lord told me to tell you this. He said, for them, he said, you got to pray Psalm 91. Pray Psalm 91 over your daughters. I'm going to pray it right now, but it's something you got to pray. Father, I pray over her daughter, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I lift up Psalm 91 over them right now, and I cover them under the blood in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that right now that every attack of the enemy that has been planned against them, that God, you will deal with every attack, every spiritual attack. Let it be dealt with. Let it be shut down now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. The Lord is going to begin to lift up a standard. I saw as if it were like a barrier being placed around them. So, Father, I thank you right now for that, that you're lifting up a divine barrier. A person named Shante, the first lady just sent up. I hear the Lord tell me to tell you this. He said, you are who I call you to be. There's some people who have been speaking against you. That have been doubting who you are. I heard the Holy Ghost say, you are who I call you to be. And the Lord said, I'm going to make you to be the vessel that I have ordained you to be. And I hear the Lord tell me, he said, you don't have to measure up to anybody. Because God told me, he said, you, you have your unique gifts. He said, you have your unique talents. And he said, I've placed them all on the inside of you. And God said, I'm going to begin to birth out new things in your life. He said, not only will I birth out new things in your life, but God said, I'm going to do something in your finances. I heard the Lord tell me, tell you this. He said that you have the heart of a giver, but God said, some of the people that you've given to, he said, they've not been appreciative but the spirit of God told me to tell you he said don't worry about it God said the day of reckoning is coming I want everyone alive to begin to share this on your page and all the way around Marcellus Baker let me tell you what the spirit of God told me he said I am the Lord that restores time he said I will restore unto you the years that the locusts the canker worm and palm worm have eaten there was someone who should have been there should have been had a much more intricate uh, 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 integral uh, kind of uh, should have played a more much more of an integral role in your life that was not there but God said I will make up for the time and he told me to tell this in this season he said i'm going to begin to give you i don't know why i just saw you in a suit i just saw you in a suit for some reason i don't know what this represents but i just saw you finally dressed and i don't know what, what's going to happen but god told me he said i'm going to transition you over into new things you're going to become your own businessman you're not going to be a person that just worked for people but god told me he said business is going to flow through you so say it the lord your god i want all those on the live to continue to share this continue to share this the more you share the more you invite the more visible you become because i ain't gonna be here that long so father i thank you right now no lean manda the lord told me to tell you he said the witchcraft that they've been practicing on you god said they've been using water witchcraft against you but god said water witchcraft will not prevail against you i saw somebody in the realm of spirit some years ago that went down to the sea to do a ritual against you but god said the ritual that they did against you god said the ritual is backfiring even now so said the lord i give you praise i give you honor in the name of jesus god i give you glory there's a woman named cora green said please pray for me to find cora i want you i want you to take up psalm 23 in prayer the lord is my shepherd i shall not want because god told me to, he said what i'm going to remove from your life is he said i'm going to remove lack from your life you've been dealing with lack off and on but god told me to, he said, i'm going to begin to deal with lack in your life and god said i'm going to begin to cause there to be a flow of divine and supernatural resources may that be your portion in jesus mighty name and also the lord told me to, he said i will bring you before people who will honor you and respect you for some reason you've not gotten the respect you've not gotten your due that you deserve and i heard the lord said i'm going to cause you to get your due tina k lee who was watching me, i want everyone on this live i got 761 i want all of you to share this right now tina k lee who was watching me upon this live right now you you have always wanted someone to help you to develop in your gifts because you know you got gifts and you know you got grace on your life. But the problem is throughout your journey and your walk with the Lord, what you've dealt with is you've dealt with a lot of jealousy. You've dealt with a lot of jealous people and you fell into the hand of evil uh, handlers. God bless you, Stephanie.
I heard the Lord tell me today, he said, I'm going to send someone into your life that is not jealous, that is not intimidated, that will see your gifts and double shot. And the Lord said, I'm going to send a midwife. That's what he's sending into your life. He's sending someone that's going to be like a midwife to help you to, to bear down and to push and to birth out these gifts that you have on the inside of you. God said, the gifts that are in your life, he said, the gifts are about to be birthed. So say the spirit of the living God. Father, let the gifts be birthed in Jesus' mighty, 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 mighty name. And God, I give you glory, God, that it's so in the name of Jesus. There's a woman named Angela Alexander who was watching me upon, there's resources. I heard the Lord said resources is coming to, Ale, to, 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 to you. Manda Angela Alexander, resources are coming. I just saw the four winds and the four directions. When God opens up my eyes and showed me the four directions and the four winds, he's going to blow resources from the four directions in your direction. You hear me? Resources is coming from the four directions in your direction. Prepare for it. Cynthia Harding, who says this is her first time. God bless you, Cynthia. Those that are coming on I want you to share this amen and invite some saints to come on. Oba Cynthia, let me tell you what the Lord, he said, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. He delights in his way. God's going to begin to order your step down a different path in this season. The Lord told me, he said, as you begin to move differently in this season, he said, people are going to begin to wonder about how you're moving because God said some things in this season you will not be very vocal about because God told me, he said, you will not let your, your right hand know what your left hand is doing. And the Lord said, you will not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing because God said in the past, the Lord said, you have eight, you've had agents of sabotage and people to try to sabotage sabotage your life and to sabotage what you are doing. But I heard the Lord said, no more will I permit sabotage. He, I hear the Spirit of God say, I'm going to give you a certain level of wisdom. And there's some people who don't like your attitude, don't like your disposition, because what they try to do is they try to get over on you. And you're a person, there's something, God bless you, so I'm partially being blocked, right? the devil is a liar. Mando, I see you there, Apostle Jessica. Mando boshikia da 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 mando do do boko sanda baha reke de de da 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 mando do do boko sanda. Yes, Lord, do it for your people. You said, see somebody said, Lord, can angels? I can't understand what is going on in my life. God, do it for Laura right now in Jesus' mighty name. Laura, I lift off of you every evil burden. For some reason, when I'm looking at, they got you tied. I see you know how you, or how a police officer mando do do boko sata. You know how a police officer ikashoba takes handcuffs. I want everyone. You want to be ministered to? Find ten people. Share this with ten people. Five. Five people, whatever, make your visibility go up. Share this all around. Here it is. I see in the realm of the spirit, I see your hands tied behind your back, Laura. And it's like, like you know how somebody's being uh, arrested? You're been, you've been under arrest. They've been arresting you spiritually. That is what you have been dealing with. You've been dealing with arrest spiritually. And so today, everything that has you arrested, everything, I see arrested development, every arrest where they've had you under arrest, I break that off for you right now. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the blood, you will not be held under arrest any longer in the name of Jesus, by the power of the blood. There's a woman named Deborah Carly that's watching me out of Liberia. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost said. He said, things are going to get better. The area that you're in, there was a lot of witchcraft in that area where you are in. A lot of, there's a lot of jealousy, a lot of witchcraft, a lot of sneaky people. And I heard the Holy Ghost tell me, he said, you walk among snakes. You walk among snakes. You walk among snakes. But God said, even though you walk among snakes, the Lord said, I'm going to give you immunity. I'm going to give you protection. And God said, when they try to bite you, God said, they will not be able to bite you. There's some serpents or some sneaky people who are going to try to bite you. They're going to try to latch hold of you. But God told me, he said, I got you. There's a person that's watching me that's on this live on the left side of your hip. You've been dealing with pain on the left side of your hip. You need healing on the left side of your hip. God's giving you healing right now. Bub V, let me tell you what the Spirit of God told me. The Lord told me to tell you, he said, hold on to the prophecy that I've already gone over your life. God said, I'm not a man that I should lie, neither the son of man that I should repent. God said, I'm going to bring to pass what I spoke over your life. He said, I'm going to not let it fall to the ground, but God said, I'm going to cause there to be a manifestation of my word. He said, I'm not a man that should lie, neither the son of man that I should repent. God told me to tell you, he said, I'm going to bring it to pass. I also hear the Lord said, you got healing in your hands. He said, use what I gave you. Mind over course. There's a woman named Antoinette Long says she short shared this multiple times. Antoinette Long, let me tell you what the Spirit of God just told me. I just saw your name come up. The Spirit of God just told me to, he said, you're too gifted to be in the situation that you're in. You are behind time. You're behind seasons. And I hear the Lord tell me, he said, I'm about to get you caught up to where you need to be in this season. I saw the Lord in the realm of the Spirit. I saw like shoes. I saw you step into some shoes. And when I saw you step into some shoes spiritually, I saw you get accelerated. The Lord said, you're going to step into another place. And he said, here it is. And I'm going to put you back in the race. God's going to give you momentum. God 
God's going to begin to cause there to be grace for you to succeed and for you to overcome. The Lord said you will have power to break through barriers. Not only will you have power to break through barriers, but the Spirit of God speaks to me, telling me to tell you this. He said that my hand will come upon you in this season. And God said, I'm going to begin to lift you up from a low place. I'm going to lift you to where you should be in this season. I used to hear the Lord also speak to me about generations worth of blessings that have been stolen away from you. God's going to begin to restore generations. As a matter of fact, the Lord wants me to release this word over individuals that are on this side. I hear the Lord said that many of you have been robbed of generational blessings. God's going to begin to break forth. And he's going to hear this. When he began to break forth generational blessings, things that have been held up over your life and over your family for a number of years, God said it's going to break open like a dam. He said, I'm going to release it over your life. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. And he said, when I open up the windows of heaven, I hear the Lord say, I'm going to pour out upon many of you blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. I hear the spirit speak to me and tell me to tell those that are watching. The Lord said, I want you to lift your eyes to the hills because God said there is come. There is something that is coming. The Lord speaks to me and tells me to tell the people that are watching. He said, for the righteous and for them that have walked before him, the Lord said, I will always provide for you. He said, I will always make a way for you. I heard the Lord said, he said, here is. He said, I will be with you. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. He said, I will be with you even unto the end. He said, even through your dark places and your dark situations, the Lord said, you are never alone. He said, I am the Lord, your God. He said, I'm your deliverer. He said, I am your shield. He said, I'm your sword. He said, I'm your buckler. He said, I'm the shade upon your right hand. He said, I'm the God that answers. He said, I'm the God that delivers. He said, I'm the God that lifts up. I hear the spirit speak to me and tell me to tell those that are watching. He said, many of you have been in the heat of a battle, but God said today, he said, I'm stepping into the midst of battles today. He said, I'm stepping into the midst of every war. I hear the spirit of God tell me to tell you. He said, today, as you are listening to this prophetic word, he said, changes are taking place. So saith the Lord your God. Yes, Lord, God, I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you glory. I give you honor. My, I hear the Lord say, there's about to be a lifting. I want all those on the line to begin to share. There's about to be a lifting. There is a lifting that is taking place. I see many of you on the floor. Many of you have been beat down by situations, but the Lord said, there's a lifting that is taking place. I hear a lot of you that are complaining and saying, Lord, I'm tired. I don't know what to do, but the Lord said, there was a lifting. I will lift you up, my children. I'm lifting you. I'm lifting you. I'm lifting you. I'm lifting. I'm lifting. I hear the Spirit say that I'm lifting. There was a lifting that is taking place. In the name of Jesus. I want everyone on the side of the beginning. I feel the Spirit of God lifting. Lifting. There was a lifting that is taking place. God, I give you praise. I give you glory. There's a woman named Kamisha. And I'm looking at your name on this side. I said, Kamisha says, I need a word in divine direction, Lord. Break generational blessings, Lord. Make a way. Let me tell you, Kamisha, you wrote that on the live, but the Lord told me, he said, you step into the grace of the Lord for the next season of your life. There's a grace that is coming. You're, you're, you're tapping into a grace. And I hear the Lord say, I'm going to begin to push you. The Lord said, what is happening? He says, the enemy has caused you to sit down at certain stages of your life, but God said, no longer will you sit down. He said, it's now time for you to move forward. I hear the Lord told me, he said, press toward the mark for the prize of the the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. The Lord also speaks to me, tells me to tell you, I'm going to begin to block your eyes and block your ears. The Lord said, I'm going to begin to cause you to move by faith and not by sight. He said, not by what you see, not by what you hear others saying. He said, you're going to begin to move at another dimension. I also hear the spirit of God, Timothy. He said, I'm lifting off for you generational bondages that have been upon you. The Lord said, you've been dealing with generational spirits, but God said this day, he said, know that I'm fighting a battle for you. He said, this day, know that I, the Lord, my God, thy God, I'm stretching out my hand onto you. And God said, I'm not only stretching my hand, but God said, I have my sword drawn. And God said, there's a fight that I'm going to engage in for you. So saith the Lord. God, I give you praise. I feel the grace of the Lord upon my head. I want all those to share this because that prophecy is going to reach many people today. God, I give you glory. I give you honor. God, I give you glory. Many of you, the spirit of the Lord tells me to tell many of you, he said the enemy has held you in one spot. Many of you have been, have felt arrested. God's going to begin to deal with the spiritual arrest that many of you, you've been captives. I also see many of you have been dealing with situations in your finances that have been crippling. I see paralysis in your finances. Finances. And let me tell you, paralysis can be caused by a serpent wrapping itself around you and breaking your back and causing you to be paralyzed. And also, there's also a way that a serpent can bite you. When the serpent bites you, it injects venom in you and it causes you to be paralyzed. You can't even move. And so many of you have been in the state of paralysis, but I heard the Holy Ghost say, I'm going to bring you out of financial paralysis. Hear this. The Lord speaks to me and I want to prophesy to people that are on this side that have the faith of the Lord to believe what I'm about to say because this is a corporate word. The Lord said, I'm going to give the grace called access today. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a, a double shot. 
done. I'm going to give you a window of time to access some things. Hear this. The Lord said a window of time to access, which means that there's some time restrictions that are in place here. You got to move in the timing of the Lord. The Lord said, I want to remind you, my children. He said, you're the head and not the tail. He said, you're the lender and not the borrower. He said, you're above him, but not, not beneath. I hear the Lord said, I'm, I'm going to begin in this season to begin to remove the words of the wicked one concerning you. The Lord said, many of you, he said, the enemy has whispered in your ear. He, he said, the enemy has caused many of you to forget who you are. He said, many of you don't remember. But I hear the Lord said, I am the Lord, your God. And he said, I come today to speak to you. He said, I come to awake your consciousness. He said, I cause you to understand today that you are who I call you to be. You are the head and not the tail. You are the lender and not the borrower. You are above and you are not beneath. I will cause you to be a light. He said, many will come unto you and they will see the brightness of your light. And many that are in darkness will look to your light. He said, you are the salt of the earth. Yes, Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. God's going to begin to awaken many of you. Many of you have forgotten who you are and who God called you to be. And let me tell you something. The Lord said, many of you have the anointing to take possession of what you need. But God said, many of you are not using that anointing to take possession. The anointing to access, the anointing to access, the anointing to access is on this live today. You need access into what God has for you. And I hear the Lord said to take the land, take the land, take the land, take possession of what he has already given to you. He's already given it to you. He said, take it by force. He said, did I not say in my word that the kingdom of heaven suffer the violence and the violence take it by force? And God said, I want you to take it by force. He said, take your health by force. He said, take your finances by force. He said, take the salvation of your household by force. He said, take your healing by force. He said, take your, li your liberty and your deliverance by force. Take it by force. So saith the spirit of the living God. I want everyone to put this on your page. That's what the Lord is saying today. We got to take it by force. I want to minister to us. I feel the grace of the spirit upon me. I feel the grace of the spirit resting upon me. Take it by force. The many of you, let me tell you something. You're greater than the witchcraft that, you're, that, that, that is coming up against you. There's a person that is watching me that is on the line. The Lord told me, he said, the enemy came and he attacked you in the night season. But God said, you're greater than the enemy that have come against you. I hear the Lord said, there's some doors that I'm going to show you how to shut so that the enemy cannot get in in the night season to attack you. Everyone that is listening to me, I want you to hear the spirit of God speak and what he's telling me to tell any, every one of you that is watching. The Lord said that the enemy is more desperate now than he's ever been. Everyone that is watching me, you got to do a, a sacred anointing of your home, a sacred anointing of your home, a sacred anointing of your home, a sacred anointing of your home. The enemy is going about like a roaring lion, seeking, seeking. It's like Mando, but you know how when somebody's looking for something, you ever seen like a drug addict looking for a, a piece of crack or something or looking just, 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 they look like they're obsessed, just, just seeking, just seeking. The enemy is seeking to, to, to enter into households. I'm looking in the spirit. I see him sniffing around, Mando looking, trying to get in, trying to get in, trying to get in, trying to get in. I'm going to go. Amen. I want you later when you're in your house, go back and watch this as a replay. I want you to, I'm going to bless this oil and this blessing that I'm going to do is going to bless the oil that's in your house. When you get an opportunity, you go out and you buy some oil. If you don't got any oil, go and get some oil. We, you got to do a sacred anointing of your house. So hit it so we can seal those households. The enemy want to get into households. We got to seal households spiritually. So father, in the name of Jesus, as I lift this, oil, I want everyone to share this right now. Put this on your page. Put this all over. This is a sacred anointing. So father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, as I come before you right now, Father, I lift this oil before you right now. We take this oil out of the natural, Father, into the supernatural. As I take this oil out of the natural into the supernatural, Father, I'm asking that right now that you would right now begin to divine, provide divine and supernatural protection over your people. That when your people begin to anoint their homes, God, that every attempt of the enemy to infiltrate homes, that you will cancel it out. That every attempt of the enemy to come in to attack spiritually, to attack with sickness, to attack, oh God, with all kinds of witchcraft attacks and witchcraft assaults, that God, it will be canceled out in the name of Jesus. Take this oil out of the natural into the supernatural in Jesus' mighty name. If you're at your house, and if you're not at home, then you're going to do this. You're going to go back. You're going to go back. And you'll go back 
and you'll do this, you'll listen to this again as we anoint a sacred anointing of the home. This is anointing oil. Father, even as I apply this anointing oil, Father, even upon in the name of Jesus, as I apply it even upon this door, in the name of Jesus, Father, I declare right now by the power of the blood of the Lamb. Father, as I anoint this door right now spiritually, Father, every home that is represented on this live, in the name of Jesus, as I apply this upon the door, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will begin right now to cover every household right now in the name of Jesus by the power of the blood, that you would sanctify every household, that you would keep every household in the name of Jesus. We cancel out every attack of the enemy upon their homes right now, and we declare <clears throat> in the name of Jesus that the enemy that desires to get in their homes, in our homes, will not be able to get in our homes. I seal these homes today under this sacred anointing. God, you said in your word, oh God, in the that whatever we ask in your name, that God, you will do it in the name of Jesus. And so today I anoint this house. I anoint this doorpost as a symbol of every home <clears throat> that is represented on this live. May the Lord hide your home from every spiritual attack. May the Lord hide your home from every spirit that wants to enter in, every spirit that peeps, every spirit that mutters. In the name of Jesus, let it be so. As I apply the oil, the oil of the anointing, protect right now. I apply the blood of Jesus right now. Let the blood in the name of Jesus, by the power of the blood, cover us under the blood. Cover us under the blood today. I'm applying, I'm applying the, the oil over every door in the name of Jesus, Father. God, I declare it right now. When you get home, I want you to apply the oil. If you're not home, if you're home, you got oil, I want you to apply the oil. We're covering our homes today in the blood of Jesus from every spiritual attack, from attacks of witchcraft, from attacks of jealousy in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual attack, God, I cover right now, even on the outside, Lord. We declare it right now. We declare the protection of the Lord over our homes today in Jesus mighty name by the power of the blood father I apply the blood I apply the blood the spirit of God is doing something for a lot of us that are on this live today the spirit of God is going to begin to provide protection 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 be protected now be covered now be secured now be hidden in the blood now may the lord hide each and every one of you today in jesus mighty 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 name may the i just saw the lord cut off a, a major accident just now a major accident i just saw it a three-car accident i just saw god cut it off a three there's a person that's on this live that the devil had already arranged through witchcraft a three-car accident the Holy Spirit just cut it off. When I closed my eyes, I saw it canceled out. It is canceled out. The accident that they have prepared for you, this three-car accident, it is cut off today in the name of Jesus. Your children are covered under the blood. Your household is covered under the blood. Your family is covered under the blood. In Jesus' mighty name, protection is your portion. In Jesus' name. The Lord that protect. Oh God, I thank you, God. In Jesus, I want to minister. To oh God, I give you praise. I give you glory for protection. Right, the hand of the Lord is protecting, and the Lord is going to hide many of you. I see a lot of enemies. Let me tell you something. I see a lot of enemies want to get into your homes. I saw a pair of eyes, and I saw the enemy just watching. There's somebody that's watching me. That's on this side. Let me tell you what your porch look like. I'm looking at your porch because I see some plants hanging on the porch. I saw in the spirit room that I saw a young man coming and looking at the house and was trying to get in and trying to rob the house. You got all these plants on the porch. The Holy Ghost said they will not be able to get into your house. They've already looked at your house. They've observed your house and they want to rob your house. God is protecting even from robbery. I bind the hand of the thief right now. The thief will not enter into your house to rob your house. The thief will not enter into your house to steal out of your house. The Lord that protects, the Lord that guides, the Lord that keeps, the Lord keep your house right now from every attack, every attempt of the enemy to enter into your home. It is cut off today in Jesus mighty name. Even I pray over your vehicles in the name of Jesus that you will not die in a horrible wreck. I was riding in the Uber a few days ago. I want those on the line. I want you to share this because I want to pray a protection prayer over you and over your children. I want to pray for God to protect from incidents and from evil incidents and evil accidents. Do you know in the witchcraft world they can set up accidents and have you killed just like that? If you're not covered up under the blood while you are sleeping between 12 o'clock, 5 in the morning, they're chanting and they're practicing and witchcraft in there. And they're, they're, they're releasing rituals. And many times while you're sleeping, they're, they're already arranging things through the spirit realm to take you out. I was riding in the car in the Uber with somebody. I was riding the Uber the other day. 
And as I was in the Uber, I was talking to the person in the Uber and he was talking, we were talking about the car and he was talking about a car that he had and how small those cars are and that that car can literally, if you, if you get, if you hit that car, that that car literally can't hold up to any type of pressure because it was a small car. And he told me, he was telling, relating a story to me about a young, a young woman that was in his car and he, and he told about how a guy ran the light and hit the side of the car. And when they hit the side of the car, there was a woman that was in the back of the seat of the car. And he said that the car began to spin around and it spin around inside of the, uh, the, 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 the road. And when it began to spin around in the side of the road, when he finally, you know, when the finally the car finally starts spinning and he looked back and he said blood was pouring all on the back seat. He said that the, that the driver hit the car and snapped the woman's neck. And when it snapped the woman's neck, the woman was bleeding all out. And by the time the paramedics got there, the woman already died. That woman didn't even know that day that when she went to step in that Uber that she was already marked for death. And there are people, hear this, and there are witchcraft workers, there are wizards and different people who arrange evil accidents. There's some places where they always have accidents, certain intersections where they always have accidents because that, that, that place has been marked. And if you are not covered under the blood, and he told me how they carried that woman's body out, how he felt so bad. He made it out of the accident without a, you know, without, you know, just a few little bruises. But that woman lost her life. And so today I want to lift up prayers against evil accidents that are arranged by witchcraft. I want to declare that I lost several family members because of accidents that died in accidents. One of my uncles, he died in an accident. He was he was a pedestrian. He was walking side the road. They hit him. Then one of my other cousins, she was pregnant and they found her car inside of like a creek, you know. So we've lost people as a result of evil accidents and the, the devil knows how to do these things through witchcraft to cause evil accidents. But I want you to share this on your page today, this prayer that I'm going to pray. I want you to share this on your page, share this with your family members. I'm going to pray against evil accidents. I'm going to pray against evil witchcraft incidents where they practice these spells and incantations to take people out because some of these people, they want to sacrifice them to their gods. So Father, in the name of Jesus, as I lift up your people, I'll go ahead and share this, 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 this right now because I want to I want to pray. I want to pray against evil accidents. The Bible said what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And so I want to bind the forces of darkness and I want to loose divine protection today over everyone that is watching me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind father every evil accident, every evil incident over their children, over them right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the thief that comes to take lives and evil accidents in the name of Jesus, that will that will not be their portion in the name of Jesus that they will not lose their lives in a horrible accident, no house fire, father, no gunshot, no whatever the enemy is arranged for anyone that is on this side, whatever the enemy has arranged for any of their children today, that Lord, they will not die that way. I declare in the name of Jesus, oh God, that it is cut off. You said whatsoever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever I loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Today I loose over each and every person today in the name of Jesus, divine and supernatural protection from every witchcraft accident, from every unusual incident in the name of Jesus from suddenly dying in your sleep as a result of a spiritual attack in the name of Jesus. They will not stop your heart as a result of a spiritual attack in the name of Jesus. I cancel that thing out by the power of the blood of the Lamb. I saturate each and every one of us with the blood of Jesus. Father, let the blood cover each and every one of us. Let the blood hide each and one, every one of us. Let the blood keep each and every one of us right now. Let the blood protect us. Let the blood hide us right now. Today, I break every witchcraft spell to cause anyone to die of a terrible accident or an incident in the name of Jesus. Let it be so in Jesus' mighty, 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 mighty name. Do you know that while you sleep, there are spirits that can jump on, on, on top of you. And they can cause you to have a heart attack. Witches can reach inside of your body if they have access and they can take and they can pop an, they can pop an artery in your heart. They can pop a vessel in your, in, in, in your head to cause you to have an aneurysm. People don't understand how the witchcraft world works, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So, Father, every incident, every witchcraft incident in the name of Jesus, every attempt of the enemy to destroy our lives, I pray, God, that you will cut it off, protect us, and hide us in the name of Jesus. Protect us from danger seen and unseen in Jesus' name. There's somebody that's watching me that's on this side. You lost a family member to a very unusual accident. The Lord said that will not repeat itself in your family again. In Jesus' name. I had my mother, her, today is my mother's birthday. As a matter of fact, happy birthday, mommy. Amen. My mother had a sibling who was about nine years old that went swimming. All of them were swimming. 
And when she went swimming, my, my mom's sibling went under the water. She got caught into like a suck hole and she went under. And by the time the, uh, by the, time the divers got there, um, she got there, they got there really, 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 really late. Um, she already drowned and they found her curled up in the bottom of the lake or the little swimming hole in a fetal position. She was down there and they pulled her out of the water. And when they pulled her out of the water, my mother said she remembered them pulling her out of the water and she was blue. She was a black child, but she was blue. They pulled her out and of course she died. She was nine years old. 30 years later, I believe it was, on the same date, one of my cousins, his name was Tez, he went swimming. And he went swimming with some of his friends, the friend's dad and with him. He ended up getting caught 30 years later now. He ended up drowning, you know, got caught up in a current or something, I believe, and he got pulled under the water. And the man could only save one, of course, so he saved his son. And my cousin, my cousin Tez at the time, he drowned. But it was 30 years to the date that my mom lost her sister, nine years old. 30 years later, same day. It's a generational curse. It's a spirit that will visit. And so we got to be very cognizant of how spirits work. Spirits are generational. Spirits are territorial. They will consistently attack a bloodline. Spirits can bring heart attacks to a bloodline. They can bring evil incidents. They can bring accidents. When you see that gun violence begins to repeat itself over and over inside of a family, that many family members begin to die of gun, gun violence because there is a spirit that is there. There is a generational curse. There is an open door. There is a pattern that is there. And we got to deal with the pattern. We got to break the pattern. We got to destroy the pattern. And so I'm declaring today that whatever pattern, evil pattern exists in your family, I'm declaring today in the name of Jesus that every tragedy, that evil tragedies in the name of Jesus will not begin to repeat themselves in this bloodline. I declare in the name of Jesus that by the power of the blood, that whatever initiated, whatever door opened to cause evil accidents, I declare in the name of Jesus that it will not prevail. And Jesus, look at some of my, my sister's son died in a car accident on the 5th of July. Look at this. We declare. People don't understand. Let me tell you. In one moment, a healthy person can be gone just like that. So that's why it's important that we got to pray these protection prayers. These protection prayers are very important. You can walk out of your house. I walked out of the house one day and I was driving. Somebody was driving me. And out of nowhere, a car slammed. Not a car. A, a motorcycle slammed into the side of the car right where I was. Right where I was. Boom. Broke up the whole side of the car. Thank God nobody was hurt because just, and it's funny, just maybe a couple minutes before the accident, I was praying and I was asking God to protect us, to keep us. And then right after it, the accident happened and somebody said, well, you, well, you prayed and it still happened. No, what the devil wanted that thing to be is that de the devil wanted death, but God covered from death. He protected from death. And so we got to pray because the devil is going about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. They want to take people out left and right. But he's a protecting God. I remember years ago, and I'm thank, I thank God for life. Years ago, when I was a kid, this is during Halloween. I wasn't even saved. My mama had an old, they had, my mama and father had a, a, a car across the street, and they had some Halloween costumes in there. And I was going to get some of the costumes out to go to school. And as I was going across the street, I got hit by a car. I literally got hit by a car. It brushed me, boom, hit me. Just like that. And I was so afraid to tell my mom, you know, that I got hit by a car. Stuff like that. Because I didn't want to get in trouble. I didn't want to get beat. I thought I was going to get beat for getting hit by a car. And I went in the, I went in the house like, like it was normal, like nothing happened to me. Then the neighbor who was looking out the window look and who saw me get hit by the car. She came and she told my mother, she said, do, do you know that your son just got hit by a car? She came down there because she was watching everything as it happened from the window. But God protected me and he covered me because I could have been dead that day. When I, I know people who have walked just in the street and got killed. People who got in the car. I, got a, I know a young man who used to play the drums for our church. He, you know. He was he was going to an event where he I think he either leaving an event where he had played drums at an event and was on his way going back to college or back to his mom's house probably I think back to his mom's house. There was a drunk driver that came and slapped and, and smashed into him, and literally the boy and he died in the car. So when I'm praying these prayers, 
of divine protection and covering is serious. Because the enemy, whatever chance that the enemy can get to try to take us out, if you don't think that the enemy will take a chance to try to get you out of here, the devil will try to kill you. The Bible said the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he said, I'm come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. So we got to pray these protection prayers over us. You pray protection prayer over your children because in one day you can be a widow. In one day you can grieve your children. In one day you can be gone out of here. So Father, today we thank you for protection. According to the word of the Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that Lord, we will not die before our time, but we will live and we will declare the works of the Lord. We will live many years. It will not be said over us. It will not be said, oh God, that we have left before our time. In Jesus' mighty name. I want everyone to write on the live. Just write this out because this is a serious and very sober moment. I want you to write, cover me, Lord. Write it on the live. Cover me, Lord. That is going to be our prayer today. Cover me, Lord. Cover me, Lord. Cover me, Lord. From danger seen and unseen. Look at those people who went to just go grocery shopping. I want you to know the severity of how the enemy is really, really cutting up and out in the last days. People who just went to a grocery store and somebody opened up fire and just start shooting and start killing people in the grocery store. People get on the subways and people shooting people in the subways. But I declare that will not be your portion. I declare that you will not, wherever there was a, wherever there was a thief, wherever there was a murderer, wherever there was someone who's looking to do damage or to do harm, that they will not be, as long as you are in that place, they will not be able to do what they want to do. They might want to rob a place, but because of the practice that the anointing of God is upon your life, protection is over your life, they will not be able to rob any place where you are. They will not be able to rob your house in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. The Lord cover your house. The Lord protect your house. The Lord keep you from danger seen and unseen in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever they are plotting, the two people that are watching me that are on this side, the Lord just cut off plots to rob your house. You hear me? While I was praying, God cut off a plot to rob your house. In the name of sometimes the people who the enemy sometimes is, is closer than what you know. Sometimes there are people that you know that will inform other people. Oh, he not here. She not here. And they will come and they will rob your house. But I saw two people that's watching me today. The Lord just cut off an attempt of the enemy to rob your house. In Jesus name, that will not be your portion. They will not rob your house. In Jesus mighty name, they will not steal out of your house. In the name of Jesus. I declare that to be so in the name of Jesus. And it is so by the power of the blood of the lamb. And yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it's my sister's birthday too. I forgot my mom and my sister's birthday today is Tashima and, and my mom. My mom had my, my sister on her birthday. Hey, Mimi, she's on the line. Happy birthday, Mimi. It's my mom and my sister's birthday. So, Father, we thank you right now. Protection be our portion now in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever they have planned against you. You hear me? It will not prosper. I want you today. Can you put your, put the names of your family from your la your last name, like your mom's last name and your father's last name? That's gonna cover your line. It's gonna cover your your your. It's gonna and your husband's last name. Okay. If you got a husband, put his last name. Put your mom's last name, your dad's last name, and put your husband's or your wife's. Uh, dad, dad, last name, amen, on this life. Because I want to pray for the family. I want to pray protection for the family. I want God to cover our families in this last and this evil days because the enemy would desire to sift us as we, you hear me? He said, he said to Peter, he said, I prayed for you. Why did I pray for you? I prayed for you because the enemy has desired when the enemy wants to sift us as wheat, when the enemy wants to destroy, when the enemy wants to take out, that's him wanting to sift us as wheat. He told Peter, he said, Peter, I have prayed for you. I'm praying, why? Because the enemy is coming and he desires to sift you as wheat. And I want to pray today for everyone that is on this live because the enemy has desired to sift you as wheat. The enemy has desired to destroy your household. The enemy has desired to destroy your family. He's desired. So, Father, 
as I lift these your people before you right now, I'm asking in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, as they put the name, Father, of their family members on their life. I want everyone to share this, find, find some family members and I'll share this all out, right? Because I want to pray this prayer and I want this prayer to reach far and wide. I don't want people to be sending out Kim Kardashian stuff and, you know, videos of monkeys doing this and people doing weave and people telling jokes and all that kind of stuff. This ain't no time for no joke. This is the time for us to pray over our family and to pray for God to protect our family. Father, as I lift these names, so I want you to go on a sharing spree and share this all out. So Father, in the name of Jesus, as I pray over these families today in the name of Jesus, Father, you have seen what the enemy has desired to do over these families. The enemy desires to sift them, Father, as wheat. He desires, oh God, to destroy these family lines. And so God, as I am praying today in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you would protect, that you would cover every family that is represented here today in the name of Jesus, that you would not allow the enemy to prevail over these families, that you would hide their family under the blood of Jesus, that you would cover their family today under the blood of Jesus, that Lord, that you would overthrow every plan. God, the enemy desires to sift these families as we desires to cut some off, desires to steal their destiny, desire to block things. Lord, as I lift them before you, God, lift up divine protection over each and every one of us, over their children today, Lord, wherever their children are, hide their children. Lord, don't let the, the bullet, don't let an accident take their children out. But Lord, hide them, Lord God, because you are the God that is able to protect. You are the God that is able to hide. You are the God that is able to keep. And so today in the name of Jesus, let it be so. Let it be so. In Jesus' mighty name, protection. Protection, Lord, over these households. Yes, Lord, protection in the name of Jesus. Mm. God, I ask you right now that you do it. Yes, Lord. I want to I want to read something. I cover all of your children. I cover all. I, I want to read something right here. Hold on. Job, the first chapter in the fifth verse. Somebody said, sent the offering. Hope it's the right one. And I, I got to check it. Look at this. I want to read this. I want everyone right now to send me a heart right now. If you can see me, send me. You can hit that heart. I just want to see my heart. So go my love. Job 1 and 5. I want to read this. It says, And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them. Look at Job sanctified his children. His children were having parties. was partying. was celebrating. And when they got done here, just doing all of that, doing they out there, living their life. Job's children were living their lives. This is what Job did. Job sent and he sanctified his kids. What it means to sanctify, to set apart. And he rose up early in the morning. And so that's a, for those of you who got children, you should rise up early and you should sanctify your children in prayer. What does it mean to sanctify? It means to set them apart. You pray for them. You pray for God to deal with your children. You pray for God to protect your children. This is the power of early morning prayer over your children. This is what Job did. And he offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. This, thus did Job continually. Job consistently interceded for his children. He knew his children were out there doing stuff they had no business doing. And he prayed for his children. He gave offerings for his children. And he didn't do it. The Bible said he didn't do it every now and then. It said, thus did Job continually. When you got children... You got family members. You got to pray for them on a consistent basis. Early morning prayer, getting up early in the morning, praying over them, praying for their protection, praying for their destiny, offering sacrifices, sacrificing your time, sacrificing your energy for your children, giving offerings for your children. You got to continually do it. Okay. It's not something you do every now and then. Job did it on a continual basis. And this is a pattern of uh, that we as believers must adopt is to continually keep our children and our family before God in prayer, to continually intercede. And preferably, the earlier you can do it. Why did he rise up early in the morning to do it? It's before the devil get busy with, with our family, before the desi. And, you know, and, and, and rising up early also means that starting while they are young, praying over your children while they are young, not waiting until your children have got, gotten older. But you start praying over them. You start fasting over them. You start interceding over them. You start rebuking the devil over your children early in life. 
Don't wait until they get old and grown. The old people say, you, you bend the sapling while it's young. You don't, when that tree is old and rusty, you can't bend that tree. But you bend the sapling while it's young. So you pray. You rise up early. You start early. Early. Start early in their life. The Bible said, train up a child in the way that he should go. When he's older, he will not depart. Train and teach your children the ways of the Lord. Pray over your children. I thank God for my mother. My mother was not saved at the time. But my mother used to send me to church. She used to send me to Sunday school, had the church bus to pick me up. What she didn't know was when she was sending her child to Sunday school, that her child would end up one day being the one who would introduce her to Christ. So you train them up in the way that they should go. When they are older, they will not depart. Like Job, lift up your children before God. That's right. Anoint your children with oil. Pray protection over them. Pray for God to keep them. Pray for God to keep them from, from danger seen and unseen. Pray that the bullet would not take them. Pray that the gun would, pray, pray that, that accidents and incidents, that they don't fall into drug addiction. You pray over your children. Sanctify your children in prayer. Because this is a wicked world and the devil is going about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And so we got to learn how to sanctify our children in prayer. And that early rising up early is a twofold meaning. It means you start early in life with them. Don't wait until they get old. My mom sent me to Sunday school. I hated Sunday school. It don't matter what they feel about not going to Sunday school. It don't matter what they feel about sitting up in church. You send them to church. Send them to Sunday school because what has been taught to them will not depart from them. I was in this house the other day. No, but yesterday, as a matter of fact, and I was sitting in the house and I was singing that Sunday school song. It's bubbling. It's bubbling in my soul. It's singing. It's shouting since Jesus make me whole. Some folks don't understand and I just can't keep it quiet. It's B-U-B-B-L-I-N-G, bubbling. My I learned that in Sunday school. I learned the books of the Bible in Sunday school. Train them up in the way that they should go. When they are older, they will not depart from it. They might get out there and get in a club, but when something break out, they'll know how to call upon the name of the Lord. Why? Because you have prayed over them. You've taught them. You trained them in the ways of the Lord. So sanctify your children. Sacrifice for your children. Fast. I'm, I'm not talking about just, you got you to gotta prepare for your children's spiritual education. Don't be so focused on the natural education till you neglect the spiritual, the spiritual educa education. You want them to be doctors, you want them to be lawyers, you want them to be scientists, you want them to be all these things, singers and, and, and basketball players and football players, but you got to also invest in the spiritual education of your children, praying over your children, fasting over your children. And if you ain't got no children, if you got net nieces and nephews, those are still that you treat like your children. You pray over them. You fast over them. You, you, when you go to church, you put a little bit of money in their hand. And say, here, my, I remember my, my mother and them and, and my grandmother and all of them, they used to put quarters and stuff in our hand and a dollar in our hand. We used to put quarters and nickels and dimes inside of the church. I, they taught me about giving young. I was giving as a little kid. They said, we give money to the building fund. There was the money for, for your pastor off and all, we did all of that when I was a kid. And let me tell you, I've seen, I've lived to see the benefit of it all. So train them up in the way that they should go. Start early in life. And let me, it don't matter. Your children, you will always carry your children in your heart. You fast and you, you fast over those children. You take some time out. You grandmothers who got time on your hand, you retired now. You take them turn to church. They don't, your, your son and your daughter don't want to go to church. Let me tell you something. You call them and say, send them. To, I'll keep them on Sunday and I'm going to carry them to church. Amen. I'm going to carry them with me. Consecrate your children. And I'm telling you, all the things I learned, they have stayed with me. All that, the, all that the word has taught me has stayed in me. See, some of y'all like prophecy a whole lot, but when I come, when it comes down to the, the raw teaching of this word, you want to run up off this line, but you need to hear this word. You, for the reason why you can't consecrate your children because you ain't consecrated. When you get consecrated, you can consecrate them. Get your act together and consecrate yourself, and then, then you consecrate your children onto the Lord. I don't care if it go down to four people on this live. I'm going to tell you, you got to consecrate yourself and consecrate your children because the devil is going out like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The prophecy chasers can leave. The people who love the word can stay because the, what the devil is doing, and then we got to be in a position to consecrate our own children before the Lord. When, you, when they go to school, you know the stuff that they're teaching them in school? They're teaching them that, amen, that there's, that there's three sexes. It's a he, a she, and an in-between. Now, now, now they're telling a young man that he can identify as, a, he can call himself a she. Dang what the words say. If you're a man, you're a man. It don't matter how you feel. You're a man. You can put on a dress, but you're still a man. You can put on a pair of slacks, but it, mean, it don't mean that, you, that, you, that you're not a woman. If you're a woman, you were born a woman. 
straight like that. That's just that's just what it is. But that's why we got to consecrate our children, anoint our children, sanctify our children, set our children aside and say, look, you ain't going to go where everybody else go. You ain't going to listen to all this music that everybody else listening to. You see this TV right here. When I was a kid, they tell me my grandma said, cut them blues off that TV. And she called everything the blues. Them world of music. You cut them music with all that cussing off. You cut that off my TV. Sanctify your children. OK, shut doors in their lives. No, you're not listening to Beyonce. I don't care about no Beyonce. We're going we gonna to study the word. Cut her off. Of, cut Beyonce off of my TV. And you put the word, put the word on there right now. I'm going to hear preaching. That's what and my mommy. I don't like this. I don't I don't care what you don't like. You're going to listen to the word because that's what you need. You need the word because Beyonce ain't going to save you in the day of your trouble. Mary J. Blige ain't going to save you in the day of your trouble. Snoop Dogg ain't going to save you in the time of your trouble. But there's a name that's above every name. And that name is called the name of Jesus. So we're going to train. We're going to train you how to call upon that name. We're going we gonna to listen to music that lift up that name. Because when that name be lifted up, he said, if, you be, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw all men onto me. So you cut all this foolishness. We're going to sanctify you right in here. Cut off all of this off of my TV in here. All of it. Okay? Well, this is what they wearing. You know, I want to wear No, you ain't wearing that. This is what you're going to wear right here because you're in my house. This is a sanctified house. And in a sanctified house, we don't do everything we want to do. We're going to do what the word said do. And so in a sanctified house, you ain't going to come in here and dress the way you want to you dress. You're going to dress the way the word said you're going to dress. And you're going to live the way the word. When I ain't saved, guess what? You ain't saved, but guess what? You're going to live like a saved person in this house. You ain't bringing nothing in this house that is unclean in this house. You ain't smoking in this house. You ain't bringing your girlfriend in this house. You ain't bringing your boyfriend in this house because this is a sanctified house. So if you want boyfriend, then you're going to find your house to carry your boyfriend. You want girlfriend, find your house to carry your boyfriend. Because what we is not going to entertain in this house, you ain't bringing them in here to set up in my house. And y'all and y'all too uh, humping and scrumping in my house. It don't work like that. Train them up in the way they should go. When they're older, they will not depart from it. We in the word. Amen. So sanctify your children in Jesus' name. So Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you that the word sanctifies. We thank you that the word cleans. And we thank you, Lord, that you are cleaning us up today through your word. And that you're going to cause us to be in right standing in the word. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And I give you glory and I give you praise, God, for the word. Help us to sanctify our children through the word of God in the name of Jesus. I don't know. The Lord just put this in my heart today. Amen. Mm, yes, Lord, I give you glory. Cover our children. Mm -hmm. Not in here, devil. You got to have that kind of mentality. Mentality. Let me tell you, with them old people I grew up under, them old people didn't even play. Them old people didn't play. Like the stuff that's going on right now, ain't been none of that going on. The other day I was in the restaurant. I just everything inside of me. I had to have a lot of grace because I saw those kids running around in that that that, uh, that restaurant. I ain't grew up with that kind of foolishness. Were you running around in the restaurant and you disturbing everybody? Let me tell you, my mother had one look through that eye. When she looked through that one eye, you knew. As a matter of fact, it was a privilege for us to even go out to a restaurant. We got the pep talk before we even got out there, so we knew not to be even running around in no restaurant. You better not ask for nothing, and you better sit down. Okay, you lucky that you can go to a restaurant. So you don't get up in these restaurants and you make them old people shame. That's it. You're behind. You're behind is grass and they the lawnmower. They're going to deal with you behind right there and there. And where you did it at is where you got it at. That's where you got it at. They ain't even wait until you get home. They're going to get you right there in front of everybody. Excuse me. Let me, let me handle this right here. And by the time they done smack your mouth up and, and bust you up and you come back sniffing and you and they say, shut it up. You go on and cry. Shut it up. If I give you something to cry about. And you go over there and you sit down. That's the way I grew up. OK, and we knew not to talk to old, old grown people all kind of way. The way they're talking to grown people nowadays, they can tell grown people whatever they feel like it. We knew them was grown people. And another thing is we didn't when grown people talking, we don't sit around when grown people talking. I had to, if grown people were sitting around in the area, I had to walk. I had to hail the grown people and walk through. I'm not going down there, sitting down there and have a conversation with grown people. Cause I'm, say, and let me tell you something. Your mom and I don't only want to correct you. They look at you and say, who talking to you? Is anybody talking to you? That's what them grown people say to you. Go, go somewhere and sit in the child's place. You don't sit there. Ain't nobody talking to you. Nowadays, we got to sit there. You got to talk to them real nice. And, you know, none of, when I was coming up, it wasn't all of that nice talking. Nice talking, nothing. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody talking nice with, with you. Go and sit down somewhere. You think somebody playing with you? That's, the, that's what I heard. You think somebody playing with you? Ain't nobody playing with you. And my mother said, you, you, ain't, you ain't on age with me. That's what my mother said. You ain't on age with me. That's what she tell me. You ain't on age with me. And then another thing she tell me, this is my house. 
You don't, you don't do what you, you don't do what you want to do in my house. When you still feel like you want to do what you want to do, then you find you another house. Okay? And I'm old people ain't had no problem. You hear me? I'm old people had no problem grabbing all of your stuff up. As a matter of fact, you ain't got no stuff. Let me stop. Because they don't want to buy all the clothes. They'll tell you real fast and in a hurry. This is my clothes. I buy clothes in here. You ain't buy no clothes. Because you ain't buy no clothes, you ain't you gonna get out and you ain't carrying nothing. Because all of this is mine. And we could not complain. It was no such thing as complaining. I remember I used to say to my mommy, I'm hung, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving. And she put food on the table. And then I would say, I don't want that. I don't want it. She said, hungry man ain't choicy. That's what she told me. She said, hungry man, not choicy. That's that. <laughs> you're going to eat what's on this table. And guess what? And if you ain't going to eat this, guess what? Then you're going to go to bed hungry. Because ain't nobody going to cook no special nothing. Then ain't nobody going to cook nothing special nothing for you. You're going to eat what is what on this table. The same food that's what's on this table right here is what the one you're going to eat. And if you ain't satisfied with that, then guess what? Then you're going to go to bed. You're going to go to bed hungry. And that, that's the way I was raised. We knew certain things. I, I ain't going to no store. I ain't going to the supermarket for a fallout in the aisle and then talk about give me lucky charms. It ain't been that because, first of all, we couldn't even, even go into the store was a privilege. We didn't go. It was not something that grown people do. They just leave us home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They leave you home. You ain't going in the store. It's grown people, grown, grown people going to town. So if you got the privilege to go to town, you you was on your best behavior. Amen. So that's where I'm coming from. Amen. So we thank God for the home training. That's how I was trained. Amen. Discipline. My uncles could beat me. My aunt could beat me. All this kind of stuff like that. You know, we didn't talk about the grown people. And another thing is that that we didn't play with is we didn't call grown people by their first name. Y'all don't know where this first name thing come from. This is a new thing. This is a new spirit going around. Call call people. Call grown people by their first name. I ain't calling no grown people by their first name. Grown people. I can I couldn't even even our neighbor. I had to put a handle on her name, auntie or miss or whatever the case might be. I couldn't even say, hey, hey, Julie, Julie, mama, Julie, I got your Julie. I know you ain't call that grown, that grown woman Julie. You on age with her? To be calling her Julie? You don't call her, pop, pop, pop. Fix your mouth, fix your mouth again. Fix your mouth again to call her, her Julie. And I knew right then and there. I better not call that's Miss Julie, that's Auntie Julie. All that. <laughs> but you better not call no <laughs> call somebody Julie. Okay, I got your call. Got your call, Julie, all right. Keep on calling her Julie. Show you. Amen. Slap up in your mouth. And let me tell you something. And I remember I'm gonna tell you this one, then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna do what God told me to do. So I remember one time, I'll never forget this one. So I was going to that school. It's not like it is nowadays. The mothers is different nowadays. When I was a kid and you go to school and you act up and you show off and the teacher have to call her. First of all, if you got to go to the parent teacher conference, you're going to get it. Parent teacher conference. So I remember this day. I went, I was showing off in school and talking back. You know, you go to school, think you grown. And so they did a parent teacher conference and they called my mother. So my mother had to come in you know when when them, when them grown people got to miss a day of their work or there's something they got to do they got to come into school because you're not you're not acting right in school let me tell you something mm -mm. let me tell you something i they, mommy had to show up for that parent teacher conference and I, and I look at it and i could see it my mom was mad you know how to get that look like they're fixing to get you so i was in there and so they was telling my mother all of the stuff that I was doing, all the stuff that I was saying, all of that. And so, you know, my mama listened to everything and, and took everything in. But boy, when we got out there, my mother said, oh, so you going to school to teach the teacher? So you going to school to teach the teacher? She got hers. You got to get yours. You know, I got my butt tabbed that day. Trying to go to school, teach the teacher, tell the teacher what to say. It's different now. They go to the school and they and 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 they go and they cursing the teacher out. When I was a kid, they didn't curse the teacher out. When I was a kid, they listened to what the teacher had to say. And then they, if anybody got beat, you was the one that got beat. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? DJ ain't got to tell off. You got beat. Amen. So train up a child in the way that they should go. When they're older, they will not depart from it. Amen. I know some of y'all want prophecy. I'm in the word. I'm in the word already. I'm in the word already. He's telling us to sanctify our children. He's telling us we got to train up our children. He's telling us that we got to bring them up, up, up under the word. Y'all popping off this line because what y'all want is a prophecy. This is the word right here. Train them up. Teach them the right way. Sanctify your children. Don't let your children sit up. If you sit, you sit your children in grown people conversation, then they're going to talk grown stuff. You ain't old enough to sit with grown people at. You go over there and sit. You go, as a matter of fact, you go outside and play. <laughs> go under that tree. Get under that tree and y'all go and play, play dodgeball up under the tree. We talking grown people thing in here. <laughs> Amen. It was the truth anyhow. It was good then. And let me tell you something. It's still good now. I got, I got a whooping. I got several whoopings. But I survived. Amen. The Bible says, spare the rod, you spoil the child. And I don't know, but the Lord put this in my heart today. And I want for those who are on this live today, God just put this in my heart today. Many of you have children. Many of you have family members. And I don't know. I want us to raise up an altar for our children and to raise up an altar. Amen. On behalf of our family members. This was a good teaching today. We got to raise up an altar on their behalf. And the Lord put it in my heart today. And we're going to put an, a seed on the ground today. According to the word of the Lord, we're going to put a seed of $25 on the ground. And here it is. And we're going to put a seed in this seed that we're putting on the ground. Amen. We're lifting it up for the future of our households. Job, hear this. Job would go and make a sacrifice for his children because he said, maybe my children are cursed God. Maybe my children have done something they got no business doing. I need God to protect my kids. I need God to step in because these kids, when they're not, because see, Job acknowledged that when his kids is not in his presence, they could be doing anything. He's not like y'all who say, oh, my girl is good. She don't do nothing. She a good girl. You know, my, my boy don't do nothing. No, he wasn't like that. He said, maybe, uh, maybe they done cursed God. Maybe they done did this and maybe they done done that. I don't want to, you know, I'm going to lift up an altar for my kids. I'm going to put some burnt sacrifices out here because I know when they get out, they was partying. They was doing what they ain't got, you know. So I don't know what they was doing when they got drunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise up an altar. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going I'm to see God. And he did this continuously. And the Lord had me talking about this today because there's some people today that need to go ahead and raise up an altar. There's a woman named, she just put an altar, a seat on the altar, 25 for her children and for hitters. And even if you got no children, you got nieces and nephews, you got family members, put a seat on this ground today. And I want you to declare in this word today that I'm raising up an altar for my family. I'm raising up an altar for my children. I'm raising up an altar. Perhaps they have done something. Perhaps there is something that is going on that is that they've done that may affect them, that may open up spiritual doors. A woman named Diana Foreman just sold a seat on behalf of her children for 25. Diana Foreman, let me tell you what the Lord told me to. The Lord said, if you put that seed upon the ground, the Lord said, oh, there's a cancellation. I saw something get canceled out in the spirit over your children's life. I saw like, if it, as it were, like a curse that was looming over the top of their heads. And God said today, he said, I just canceled it out. He said, well, the devil is meant for evil in your children's life. He said, I turned it around for good. A woman named Tanya Camacho just put a seed of 25 on the ground for her, her, her children. I hear the Lord tell me to tell you this. He said that what the enemy has been doing through generational curses, he said, I'm undoing. Let me tell everyone that is on this side that has the ability to do this. And if those who will be obedient to this today to raise up this altar, the Lord said it's not by chance that he's spoken this word today. The Lord said today he's lifting up an altar a protection over your generations and so those who are putting this seed on the ground you are declaring over your children and this will be recorded in the books of the heavens today that you have planted a seed on behalf of your children and God is going to do something on behalf of your children and for those of you who don't have children who have family members let me tell you the Lord said I'm going to do something over your family Vivian just put a seed of 25 in the ground Vivian who just put a seed of 25 just raising up an altar for your children the spirit of God is about to do something in hit this the spirit of God is going to do a couple things one of the things that God's going to do God's going to begin to bring closure to some situations I see as if it were walls in your family God's going to break down walls but also not only is God going to break down walls but God's going to begin to unlock blessings that have been held up over this family father we thank you in the name of Jesus God for those that are raising up an altar today a person named Hermika just put a seed upon the ground Hermika who just put your seed upon the ground the Lord told me to he said I'm going to bring an end to satanic cycles in your family apostle Don, Dr. Shonda Kirk who was putting a seed upon the ground the Lord told me to tell you he said I'm going to 
use your children to shake the kingdom of darkness. Here it is. Jeremiah, the Lord brought Jeremiah before me. And as Jeremiah came up before me, I saw a crown of wisdom upon his head. I said the reason why they came at a season after Jeremiah, because he said they realized the grace that is upon his head. Ebony Green just put a seed of twenty, uh, uh, put, put a seed upon the ground. Ebony, I cover your household. Let me tell you, I see scholarships. I see opportunities. There's some people that are sowing and they're lifting up an altar for their children. And you don't know what you're doing. You're blessing a prophet in the name of a prophet. And God said there was a prophet reward that's being released even upon the head of your children today. Prophets reward. Those as you're putting this, I look and I saw through the spirit room, I saw like a portal open. As I looked at the portal open, I saw an angel dropping things out of the portal. I saw blessings dropping out of a portal. God said, I'm going to release blessings on your household today. Your children will be blessed. You hear me? Your children will be blessed. There are people raising a woman named Kiana Henderson. Those who want to sow the seed, the information is pinned below. You can also sow in cash at Prophet SB, uh, dollar sign. Father, do Kiana Henderson. Let me tell you what the Lord told me. He said, you have fought a lot of battles in this life. But God said, what you have not been able to overcome, the Lord said, the next generation will be able to overcome. And your next generation will take it further. Valerie just sowed a seed of 25. Father, we're lifting up an altar. Father, we, we don't know what our children have done. We don't know what maybe our children have offended you. Father, today we lifting up this seed upon the ground we're placing a seed upon the ground on behalf of our children and fathers we place a seed upon the ground on behalf of our children even as my grandmother will put money in my hand and lord caused me to put an offering on the table let me tell you something all those years of my grandmother putting money in my hand my mother put money in my hand my auntie put money in my hand to bring a seed on the altar it opened up doors and let me tell you something that there's those of you today that are dropping seeds upon this altar on behalf of your children and the Holy Ghost told me today, he said, I'm doing something for your children now. Mandabasa. Tracy just put a seed upon this ground who lifted up an altar on behalf of her children. Tracy, the Spirit of God told me today, he said, I'm going to begin to cover your children on every side. I saw as if it were like a black bird trying to swoop down. And when I saw that thing trying to sweep out, I saw like a shield come up and block that bird. He said, the fowls of the air won't be able to attack your children. So saith the Lord. There's somebody that got a child in the military. Raise up an altar of protection over your child in the military because the days of war are all upon us. Lift up an altar on behalf. Hear me. You got a child in the military. The days of war are upon us. The days of war. Put a seed in the ground on behalf of your children. The children that are in military. I just saw a young man in the military. Father, cover him right now. Cover our family members that are in the military. Lord, hide them. Rachel Coleman just put a seed upon the ground. Rachel Coleman, the Lord told me to tell you this. He said, I'm going to hide even your household. I just saw, like your, I saw three people in a cave. I just saw three of them get covered. Veronica just put a seed on on the ground veronica the lord says your time can someone sow a seed for tammy norwood on the line will sow a seed of 25 dollars on behalf of tammy norwood for whoever sows this seed for tammy norwood i heard the holy ghost told me to he said the release of the lord and the favor of the lord will be your portion he said i'm going to settle some things for you there's a person that needs financial settlement they're going to put a seed on the ground and it's going to be for tammy norwood because she needs a breakthrough over her house so somebody going to stand in the gap for tammy and god's going to do it for them there's a person going to put a seed of 55 on the ground one person going to put a seed of 55 on the ground. You hear this. Rick, you have five children. You're going to put a seed of 55 on the ground. You have five children. I heard the Holy Ghost tell me he said you've been having a bit of trouble with one of them. But God told me he said the one that you've been having trouble with is the one that I'm going to manifest myself through. Dorcas Hunter just sowed a seed for her daughters and her granddaughters. Father, I felt, let me tell you, I felt your seed. I felt the love that you have for your children and for your seed. I feel it. I feel the deep love. These seeds that are going on the ground today are from a place of love. How much you love your children. Those who want to sow on the cash app is dollar sign profit SB. Somebody rotate that information that's sowing information for those who desire to sow. Father, I lift up your people. I lift these seeds up upon this altar. This altar, Father, that is being lifted up today, these that are placing their seed upon this altar, God of miracles, arise over their children. Let the floodgates be open. Amanda, who just put that seed upon the ground, Amanda, the Holy Ghost told me today, he said, oh, I don't know. There is a production. I just saw a production before my eyes. 
There's some type of pro production. There's something. There's something. You're going to write something. You're going to write a script. You're going to write something. Mind them. And be very careful who you show your material to because I see so much people who are thieves in this industry. And I saw in the realm of the spirit them trying to steal away from you. Steal away from you. Steal away from you. Because you have such gifts and you have such, you have such talents. For those who want to sow by, by Cash App, it's, it's, it's dollar sign Profit SB. My God, I'm thanking you, Lord. God is doing something for people that are on this live today. God's making a way for many of you. Please sow for me looking for a job. Denise Store, open the door for Denise. Father, we're live some of you cannot sow a seed of 25. You can sow a seed of $5. You can sow a seed of $10. Put your seed upon the God. I want to lift up this altar today. Father, as I lift up these, your people, and the people who are sowing $5 seeds, $15 seeds, whatever the Lord puts on you. Shanika, I felt your seed. Shanika, let me tell you what the Holy Ghost said. I heard the Holy Ghost tell me to tell you this. He said, my hand is not short. This is what he said to Shanika. He said, my hand is not short that it cannot save. The Lord said, I'm going to save. Let me tell you, there will come a day, Shanika, where your children will come back and your children will take care of you. Hear this, mark this day that you have heard this prophecy come out of my mouth. Some of you who don't have a seed, share this with five people as your seed. Hear this. The day will come where your children will come back and your children, hear this, will be a blessing to you. Hear me, your children will come back. My mother just sowed a seed for her children. So Father, I received that for myself and all my mother. Even for my, even for my, my, my youngest sibling, Lord, make a way for him to get the vehicle that he need. Make a way for him to get the vehicle that he need, Father. In the name of Jesus. Even if some of you have children or you have nephews that are, we're raising up an altar. You may have nephews or you might have family members that are in prison right now. Can you place an, a seat on this altar? It's a seat of sacrifice. Job lifted up an altar for his children. You might have a nephew whose mother didn't take care of him. Mando Put a seat on this altar. He might be in prison. Somebody said, I need prayer. Shanika Royal. Shanika, I lift you up before God. God said, I'm going to intervene. He said, you're not alone. He said, I'm carrying you through this season. You are not alone. You may have a nephew. You may have somebody, amen, that their mother did not take care of them. Put a seed on the ground. Letitia Simmons just put a seed on the ground for her children. Father, remember all of these that have sold on behalf of their children. There are people who cannot... The people who cannot give, they don't have the money to give, but they have shared today. Honor their seed of, of sacrifice, of sharing in the name. <sighs> Open the door for their children. Open the door over their household. Make a way out of no way. Provide for them in the name. Supernatural provision in Jesus name. Shante Thompson said, I sent my seed for my nephew. Put your nephew, Shante, put your nephew's name on this live right now. If you're sowing for someone who's a family member. I don't care what it is. My seed just came up my car to a few, few months ago to subscribe to you. Father, right now, in the name of you, for Rochelle, open the door for Rochelle right now in Jesus' mighty name. Look at Sister Linda says, sewing for my niece. When I tell you, I feel love flowing, sewing for my niece and her daughter. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. God, even today, in the name of Jesus, Father, every sacrifice, whether it's a share, whether it's, a, whether it's Father, a, a, a $5, $25, whatever seed, whatever altar that they're lifting up on behalf of their children, $25. Somebody sowing seeds of $50. Father, I'm asking in the name of that you would honor every seed that is being sold on behalf of their children, on behalf of their family members, even family members that are on drugs, family members God, hear us as we are lifting up this altar. We're lifting up the altar. We're making sacrifice, oh God. We're bringing not only our prayers, but God, we're bringing our offerings before you. And we lift up offerings in the Dio Sanda on behalf of our children, on behalf of our nephews, on behalf of our nieces, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, even BJ, remember BJ, my nephew, Lord God. 
God, I'm asking God that you would save and deliver them, that you would receive our offerings, that you would receive our sacrifices. Lord, let these sacrifices that are lifted up upon this altar, let it move over them right now. And God, hear our cry as we bring and we bring sacrifice upon your holy altar today in the name of Jesus. Let there be sacrifice right now in Jesus' name. Let there be blessing. We lift them before you, God. We lift them. Somebody's praying for their grandchildren today. Bless their grandchildren. Somebody's praying, Lord God, for their children. Someone's praying for their niece. Someone's praying for their nephew. Someone's praying, Lord, hear our cry. Don't let them be cut off before their time. Let them be saved. And even for those that are behind prison doors, Father, I lift up my, I lift up my brother, Boobo, I lift up my brother Maine. I lift up my sister Kirby, Lord. I'm asking God that you deliver each and every one of them in Jesus' name. Let it be so. In Jesus' name, Joshua. Remember Joshua. Remember Joshua. Do it, Lord. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. May the Lord honor every seed, every share. Everything that you've done today, may the Lord receive it and may he bless it in Jesus' name. I have prayed. Somebody just named Dorcas. She sowed, she sowed a seed for somebody else. I just saw when she said, she, I sowed a seed for somebody else's child. See people sowing for their nephew. I see somebody named Angela. She said, she's sowing. Father, I thank you, God. I give you glory. I give you honor, Jesus. I lift your name up. Somebody's praying. Olivia says, my children, Korea, Sandra. Father, thank you, Lord. There's some people, Father, somebody says, God, save my grandchildren. Father, do it right now. Ava Brooks says, my children, especially Keanu. Father, right now, I lift them up in the name of Jesus. Father, those that are strung out on drugs, those that are locked up behind prison doors, those that have felt forsaken and forgotten by us. You told us, oh God, that we're supposed to visit them that are in prison. Father, forgive us for not doing the duty of visiting those that are locked up, for forgetting about them. Forgive us, Lord. Somebody said, Nikia says, I shared this with five people for my children. Nikeshi, Nikeshi, I cover your children. May your children become a mighty success. In Jesus' name, I give you praise and I give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I prayed. Amen and amen. I love y'all so much. I'm going to go into my group. If you're a part of my subscribers group, I just want to have a small conversation with, with those who subscribe. If you want to be a part of that, there's a bluish green shield down with a heart in the middle of it. You can subscribe there or where it says become a subscriber. There's three dots you can hit there. I'm going to go in and just have a conversation. Somebody said, pray for me. I'm not feeling well. Malapi, I pray over you right now. May God touch you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. May healing be your portion in Jesus name. Amen. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to share with them. I just something I want to talk to them about and something I want to share that's part of my heart. But if you want to be a part of that, what I'm doing. Amen. You can come over there. My subscribers, when I go live, subscribers, you'll see me because I'm going to cut this live out and I'm going to go live over there. So if you want to be a part of that subscribers only live, then you subscribe. Amen. I love y'all so much. I'm going over there right now. All right. See y'all in a couple minutes.